this is another day that, that the Lord has made and the day we will never see again. I'm just so, I'm so thankful that I can't say it enough. I'm thankful for all the saints and the family that's here. Thank you, Jesus. Um, give an honor to my, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the absence of our pastor and his family. Yes, Lord. And to my wife, Denisha yes. Willis. Yes, Lord. Thank saints, the Lord. Here. I just pray that the Lord continues to move in a mighty way. I know our leader is not here, but we're going to praise God anyhow. That's right. We're going to lift him up anyhow. That's right. That's right. We praise Jesus. The Lord is still here. That's right. We honor the Lord. The Lord is still here. Yes, Lord. There's more than three of us here. That's right. There's more than three of us here. It might be strange for us. It might be strange for some. Come on, come on. That he's not here and his family's not here, but we're going to give God praise. That's right. Because Jesus is here. Amen. Amen. He's still alive and breathing. His family's still alive and breathing. Yes. We're so thankful for that. But Jesus is alive and well. Yes. Jesus is That's alive who and we well. praise. And we're here to lift him up. Yes. We're here to lift Amen. him up. Amen. We are here to lift Jesus up. Amen. Jesus. We just need to make room. Make room for the Holy Spirit. Jesus. Make room for him. We have to get out of that normal routine of things. Amen. Get out of it. That means changing your seats. Amen. 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 Changing your seats. Be real with God. Giving him something different. Giving him something that you didn't give him yesterday. Jesus. Last week. Give him something different. I'm here to encourage your hearts and your minds. And I wouldn't give what I have to give if it wasn't fitting for me. If it didn't prick my heart. If it didn't touch me, my mind, my heart. I wouldn't give it to you if it didn't touch me. So I'm praying that. It touches at least somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. And at the end of the day, if it doesn't touch any of you, and it just touched me, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Yes. We're going to be turning to a couple of scriptures, a couple of verses. That's yeah. all right. First, the first one we're going to turn to is First Peter, the third chapter. And we're going to grab one verse out of that one. And then after that, we're going to go to Proverbs, the 18th chapter, and the 21st verse. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. Oh, that's it. And the Word of God is right. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Amen. Tell me about it. The Word of God is right. Amen. All by itself. The Word of God is just, it lines up. That's right. Past, present, future. It's going to attack us. It's going to hit us. Yeah. That's right. right. First Peter, the third chapter, the 10th verse. And it reads, it says, For he that will love life, yes, sir, and see good days, yes, sir, let him refrain his tongue from evil. Everybody say tongue. Tongue. Oh, Jesus. For he that will love life and see tongue. good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. From evil. And then what? In his lips. That they speak no guidance. Everyone say speak. 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 Proverbs the 18th chapter. 21st verse. And it reads. It says, death and life. Yes, sir. Oh, Jesus. Are in the power of the tongue. What's in the power Jesus. of the tongue? Death and life. Death Jesus. And life Jesus. Are in the power of the tongue. They are in the power of the tongue. And read on. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So those are two verses, and it proves already, and there's more. There's more. Amen. But it proves already in the word of God that the tongue has power. Yes, right. it does. Yes, it does. That's right. The hey. word we speak have power. Jesus. Amen. When we speak, we have power. Yes. Right. Jesus. We have power to build up. Right. Jesus. And we have power to destroy. Amen. Our words have power. My God. Our tongue have power. When we speak, when I speak, it has power. So what we speak into the air, heavenly plays into our 
lives. That Jesus. Not only my own life, but it plays into my brother's life and my sister's life. Amen. It plays into other people's right. life. And it sounds crazy, but it, our words and, our, and the things we speak hold more harm and they do more damage than what we can physically do. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. My words right. have more power than my punches. That's Amen. right. Jesus. That's right. I Come can on. Do the hardest punch. I can put my shoulder in it, but my words can hit harder than that. That's right. And when I pull from the word of God, it hits way harder than that. That's right. Jesus. Jesus. It hits way harder than that. So. And you can deny that power if you want to. But at the end of the day, it, it's just straight facts. That's right. Yeah. right. We wouldn't allow anything to leave our lips if we didn't think it was true, whether we believe wholeheartedly or partially. That's right. We speak these things into the air. There's some truth behind it. That's right. Negative or positive. Matthew, the 12th chapter. Mm. Matthew, the 12th chapter, the 34th verse. Mm -hmm. And it reads, it says, O generation of vipers, yes, sir. how can ye, being evil, speak good things? So we question. Mm. O generations of vipers, snakes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sneaky right. ones. Wow. Yeah. So, that's a viper. Yes, so, yes, yes. How can ye? Who's a backbiter? My God. How can you, who's evil, Jesus. Right, speak good things? How? Yeah. How is it possible That's right. for you with the stony heart, Jesus. with the heart full of malice, a heart full of hatred, speak good things? It's impossible. That's right. So It's impossible. That's right. So how are you able to speak good things? Read on. For out of the abundance of the heart. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So whatever's in your heart is going to come out your mouth. Talk about it. So, so. Whatever's in your heart is going to come out your mouth. Whatever hatred's in your heart's gonna manifest. You can hide it from, from man all you want to. You can hide it from the elders, the ministers, you can hide it from me. But it's gonna manifest itself. If you have hatred in your heart, it will show. That's right. That's right. That's right. A good man. A good man. Out of the good treasure of the heart, bring it forth good things. So a good man. Yeah, yeah. Out of the good treasures of his heart, he bring it forth good things. That's right. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, bringing forth evil things. So we already established what an evil man can bring forth. Whether he's trying to hide it or not, That's he's right. going to manifest himself as evil through his words, through his speaking, through his tongues. That's right. A good man has good treasure in his heart. That's so it's right. very possible for him to give out positive, positive words and speak positively. Yeah. yeah. So we've established that our words, our tongue, our speaking has power. Proverbs states that a hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. Right. So, and unfortunately, this is something very familiar that we see nowadays in the church and out of it. Yeah. Like I said, we won't even have to lay a finger on someone to cause them harm. That's so, right. So, it's that easy for our words, our speaking, our negativity to do all the work. That's right. To cut deep. Yeah, they cut. To cut real deep. We got real deep. So, and the thing about it, it's not a temporary thing. Our words hurt, and it leaves a lasting imprint. That's right. On a person, and even on yourself. Yeah, that's right. We sit there. Yeah. What we do when we sit there in negativity, when we have such a, a stony, viper like heart, that's right. We sit there unsure of our own selves. We sit there unhappy. With our own selves. So, and we sit there and we, we plot. So, Jesus. We plot Jesus. on others. Jesus. So, we plot on others. My God. And we sit there seeing how low we are. So, how unhappy we are. Yeah. And we try to bring someone as low as we are. And then the scary part about it, we try to bring people beneath us so, so we can feel good about ourselves. So, we do that. And then you have the nerve to say, it's not deliberate. Here's the thing. So Here's the thing. It, it is all deliberate. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Whatever, like it was in the scripture. It says, whatever is in your heart will come out. That's right. That's 
Right. Whatever yeah, in your heart will come out. So you can sit there and say, oh, it wasn't deliberate. I didn't mean to bring that person down. I didn't mean to bring that sister or brother down. But it's deliberate because it's in your heart. Amen. Amen. It's in your heart. So, yeah. And what like, it's crazy. You bring someone not even as low as you are, but you bring them beneath you. Amen. So, beneath where you are. Just so you can feel better about yourself. And when you when you actually get it done and you bring them lower than you are, you're still not satisfied. So, so Jesus. You're Jesus. still not satisfied. Jesus. Come on, sir. So you find another victim. Yeah. So, you find another victim. I'm gonna be real with you and I'm gonna admit, I've been on both sides of that. So, Amen. I've bullied, I've teased, I've been bullied, I've I've been teased. So, right, right. You ever been on the receiving end of being harassed, yeah. manipulated, Jesus. talked about teased? Jesus. It doesn't feel right. No, you it doesn't. You wonder why depression is in the land. And you wonder why people are suicidal. So, That's so, right. You wonder why. You wonder why. Our punches don't mean anything, but our words mean everything. That's right. That's right. Our words so it's a word. It means everything. Amen. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That's right. So it is all deliberate. Everything that comes out of our mouth. Yep. It's deliberate. Like I said, you wouldn't say it if you didn't believe it wholeheartedly or half-heartedly or quarter-heartedly. You believe it. So you believe it. And if you didn't, you wouldn't even say it. That's so right. that's right. And for the ones that don't bully or don't dish out their negativity but choose to let it sink into themselves yeah. and beat themselves up. I want to beat myself up, but I kind of beat myself up in a way that kind of helps me to grow. Amen. Like I don't sit there and wallow Amen. in my mess. Amen. Amen. I don't sit there and wallow in my mess. Like I beat myself up because I'm... I'm the type of person, I don't like to make the same mistake twice. Amen. So, Amen. Amen. So if I mess up, I take it, I take it hard. I take it hard. And I learn from it. And Jesus. I guarantee you I won't make that mistake again. So, Jesus. But I'm talking to the wild of us, the ones that are negative. They don't dish it out to others, but they walk in it. Jesus. Their shoulders are down. They're gloomy. Jesus. They're gloomy. They Jesus. can't talk to anybody. Come on. They can't share with anybody. Jesus. And I get it. You don't want to bring the other person down. I appreciate you for that. So, I appreciate you for that. But there's someone out there who can actually encourage you. That's right. Yeah. Amen. There's someone out there that can encourage you. But no, you choose to sit there a while and have your shoulders down. And you choose to dwell. You're dwelling in negativity. Jesus. You're sitting in dirty bed. My God, my God. My God. And what you're doing, you're tearing yourself apart. And you say these things to yourself, and you and we all have that voice in our head. Yes, there's Jesus. And then there's your voice. Uh -huh. I'm nothing. I can't do it. So I, it can't be done. I'm not built for this. This is I'm not used to this. This is nothing I really do. I'm weak. So, mm. I'm weak. I'm weak. But in the book of Joel, it says, let the weak say that I am. Hey, strong. hey, hey. Right. Jesus. Right. Just let the weak Come say on, brother. I am strong. Not think it. It's all right with thinking it, but oh. say it. Jesus. Say it. That's Speak right. It. Speak it. There's a reason business. why our tongue has so much power. There's a reason why. Our tongue is like in all, it's all throughout the Bible. So, it's all throughout the Bible. Our tongue has power. Our words have power. What we speak into the air yeah. becomes, it becomes what it is. That's right. That's right. It becomes what it is. Yeah. Matthew, the 21st chapter, and the 21st verse. And we all know this one. Mm. Right. Mm. Read on. 
and they said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Yes, sir. If ye have faith, yes, and doubt not, ye no, shall doubt at all. I'm sorry to cut you off. That's no doubt at all. That's right. That's right. If ye have faith and doubt not, you know, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree. Yes, yes sir. But also if ye shall say unto this mountain, say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Be thou removed. And I yes. like how Jesus said that. Because we all know what a mountain is. Yes. Yeah. We all know what a mountain is. It, that thing sits high. Yeah, right. It's huge. Yeah, it's right. rooted. Yeah, Sometimes you can think, how did it get there? So, wow, so, try pushing a mountain by yourself. It cannot move. Technically. Yeah, so, so, so God chose a mountain. He chose a mountain not just to push it. So, just say remove it. So, he said <laughs> right. remove it and what? Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. So not just picking it up, but throwing it into a sea. That's right. Yeah. Throwing a mountain into a sea. Every time I come across it, I picture it. Yep. Just a mountain being lifted up and thrown. How do you throw a mountain? So, Jesus. So, Jesus. How do you throw a mountain? Yeah. Jesus. But the thing about it, he said, it shall be done. It shall be done. That's Jesus. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, believing ye shall receive. Ye shall receive. So whatever you ask for. So that means you actually have to open your mouth. That's right. Amen. Use your words. Speak. That's right. Speak those things. Open your mouth and use your words. My God. One of my favorite stories. In the book, is the man that with the infirmity for 38 years. And you can talk about him and give a topic. You can give like 50 topics about that uh -huh. one story. Yes, Lord. But I love it. But what, when I kept reading it, and I read it again last night, the man with the infirmity for 38 years was asked a question. That's right. Jesus asked him a question, heavy on the ass. <laughs> he asked him, Wilt thou be made whole? That's right. He was asked the question. That's right. And if y'all know the story, this man of 38 years was at the water, which was troubled. And he was among many who were at the troubled water looking for a blessing, looking for a miracle. And this guy with the infirmity, his particular infirmity caused him to uh, be handicapped. So he couldn't really carry himself. He had to be carried. He had to be carried. Or he needed a, a crutch. But God, Jesus came to him and said, Will thou be made whole? He asked him a question. That's right. him. That's right. And there was a reason behind Jesus asking him a question. And they don't sink into it much. Because he made him whole at the end of the day. That's right. He made him whole at the end of the day. But when Jesus asked that man with the infirmity of 38 years a question, the man replied with an excuse. Yeah. So, a lot like us. So, a lot like us. So, he gave Jesus an excuse. And he said, there's no place. There was no one to place him in the trouble water. Or there's, there's too many people cutting in line in front of me, so I wasn't able to make it. Into the troubled water. And I looked at that. And before I read that Jesus made him whole. Because we all know that Jesus made him whole. Amen. I looked at that. And I went back to the question. He initially asked this man. Will thou be made whole? And instead. Of him. Giving an excuse. Jesus was looking for him to respond. Saying I will. Be made whole. That's right. I will be made whole. In his words, if that man of infirmity for 38 years would have responded in that way, he would have been healed as he spoke. That's right. Yeah. That's right. As he, that's how I imagine it. My imagination is crazy, don't get me wrong, but that's how I imagine it. Yeah, yeah. Because there's power in our speaking, there's power in our words. So when Jesus asked him, will you be made whole? His answer is still been yes. Yeah. That's right. Speak life. That's right. Yes. The power of tongue is evident. It's evident not only in the word of God, 
It's evident in our everyday lives. Amen. Amen. If I can remember, it's something that I, I've dwelled on for years. Before I, I came here as an official member, and you can have a seat, you're done. <laughs> Before I officially became a member, I remember the prophecy that was spoken over my life. Jesus, come on. And it's something that I won't forget. Jesus. Before I became an official member here, I don't know how many years ago it was, maybe three or four. And I remember exactly where I stood. Mm. Right there. Wow. Along with my brother-in-law, Pedro yes. Mendoza. Wow, yes. And I was still attending my old church, my family's church. Mm -hmm. Not knowing the calling that God had in my life. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Not knowing what, what it is that I would do. Or what it was for me. And I remember just sitting in the congregation and then the pastor called me up. And he called my brother-in-law up. And he spoke over us. Amen. He Amen. He started to prophesy. Amen. Jesus. He started to speak saying. He, so he told me that I already knew what he was about to say. Mm. And I never really admitted to him until now I knew what he was about to say. Jesus. Jesus. And, it took, and I was fighting over that thing for years before he even called me up there. And he started to speak. He told me that I would be a minister of the gospel. He mm -hmm, told me mm -hmm. that I would preach the word. And he prophesied a vision, if I can remember correctly, that we were both speaking mm -hmm. in a church. And it was strange <laughs> that we were speaking in the church. Ooh, Jesus. And that the congregation was sitting there and they were gray. Mm. They were gray mm. and they had no life. But he said, as I got up, and as we got up, and we started to speak life, Jesus. started to enter into them and then color. Jesus, started Jesus. To fill them. Jesus. It started to fill them. It started to fill them, and it's something that I held on to for years. And I think that was two years before I entered into the ministry. Two years before I even came into this church as an official member. But I held on to that. He spoke that. And so the words that we speak are like little seeds. That's right. That's right. Amen. The words that we speak are like little seeds and you plant them. And they start off tiny. They start off tiny, but then they begin to blossom and fester. And then they start to manifest and they start to become visible. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I looked back at that time and even though I knew what he was going to say to me and I never doubt the word of God or prophecy at all or visions, I was still unsure about certain things. But I held on to it. And I held on to his encouraging words. And I held on to the life he was speaking into me. No one knew my heart except God at that moment, but I felt low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought I was nobody. Jesus, Jesus. I thought I was nobody, and until this point, I wouldn't say that I'm any rank or hold any merit. I understand. But I felt low at that time. Mm -hmm. But when he spoke that to me, he, it gave me life. Jesus, it gave Jesus. Me the push yes. That I needed. Confirmation. And instead of him speaking ne negatively towards me, he pulled me out a nobody. God spoke through him and he gave me life, planted that seed in me, and it festered in me, and it's still festering in me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's still festering in me to this day. And it's pushing me. It's pushing me for Jesus. greater. It's pushing me to want to fight more. It's Jesus. pushing me to be in my word more. Yes. It's pushing you, me Lord. to want to be the leader that he wants me to be. Thank you, Lord. It's pushing me. I look, at, I look back at that night so many times. And what could have been and what should have been. And I even look back to just conversations I had with my wife. And just how the power of your words and your tongues and just stuff you speak into existence comes. Yes, that's and right. Manifests. And she can back me up. Thank you, Jesus. Me. Thank you, Jesus. Before we got married and as we were married, we contemplated 
planning on moving from New York, moving further down south, mm -hmm. just getting out of here, mm -hmm. looking for a better place to live, looking for a, a cheaper place or something considerate or moderate mm -hmm. for us. Amen. Something that would be comfortable for Amen. us. We talked about it prior to marriage and in the mix of the early stages of our marriage. Thank you, Lord. And me still being at my home church under Pastor uh, Bishop Stinney, and knowing that the need that was there, the help that was there, being under my father, like my heart wanted to be there. I'm being real with y'all now. Amen. Amen. I wanted to be there for my father and for the pastor and for Bishop Stinney and just be there for the young people there because I felt that there was a need there. And there was at the moment. And me serving as a youth president there, my decision on wanting to leave wasn't, I couldn't make a hasty one. Amen. I couldn't make a hasty decision. But then I thought about my, my wife and then children to come. Amen. And I was like, I need this for my children. Like, I need this for my wife. I want them to be secure. I want them to be safe. So I heavily contemplated on leaving, leaving New York, period. And then I would just deny it and just decline it. And just, I would always tell my wife, and she could back me up. I was like, I feel that there's something in New York for me to do. I feel that there's something that I have to do here. Jesus. Each time the conversation came up, and we talked about it, I came closer to, to wanting to move. I always go back and I kept telling her, there's something in New York that I have to do. <laughs> Jesus. There's something I have to do. What a mighty Not God we serve. What my position would be, not knowing what effect that I would have on people or my family Jesus. or my brothers and sisters. Not knowing who I was here for, who I was here to assist, who I was here to help. Amen. Not knowing Pastor Blair as close as I do now. Yeah. But I, I kept telling her, there's something I have to do. Thank you. Then we heard word that Pastor Blair, we heard that a minister or elder came here uh -huh. to a church not far away from us and is taking over a church. And crazy part, crazy part about this, my older brother, who, left, who now lives in South Carolina, mm -hmm. told me about it. <laughs> he told me about Listen it. Listen to this. He told me about it. He lives in South Carolina. That's, and I'm going to be real, that's the place where I almost moved to. Uh huh. He told me about it. And he's like, yeah, just see, oh, see if you can actually go over there and help yeah. in some kind of way. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In some kind of way. Jesus. In some kind of way, Come on, brother. I told over years, and I would always go to my wife. I was like, baby, do you remember when I kept telling you, there's something I have to do here. I think this is it. I'm not too sure. Wow, wow. So over a year, a year and a half or two years, we were contemplating, but we were fellowshipping with the whole Jew church, uh -huh. which is now ORC. Uh -huh. We were Jesus. fellowshipping with y'all. Fellowshipping, not knowing that this is the place where I would actually be. <laughs> oh, what sweet fellowship. Not knowing the effect that it would have on me. Not knowing the effect that it would have on my family. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Save the whole family. Jesus. I look back at that time and I just look back. On, on me just listening to the Spirit of God and not moving selfishly, but also speaking things into it existence. Right, you know, I don't right. have the power to give life, but I can speak life. Yes, I can build up. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Amen. And just those words and putting it to the air each and every time I said it and spoken to my wife about it. And just the, being able to see it manifest yes. now. Oh, yeah. Jesus. It's, just, it's a sight to see. Yes, it's Lord. a sight to see for me. Yes, Lord. It's a sight Hallelujah. to see. Hallelujah. I just look back on where the Lord has brought me yes, from. Yes, that's right. I don't want to sound selfish. I'm, I promise you, I'm not a selfish guy. I but understand. I look back where he's brought me from. Now how I used to think little old me can't be saved. Little old me can't preach the word of God, but I'm doing it. Hey! Wonderfully too. 
I'm doing it. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I'm doing it. Been doing it. I'm too young to be a preacher. I'm too young to be an elder. I'm too, too young to lead a flock. I'm doing it. Yes, you are. Yes, Lord. I'm doing it. And this is through the help of the Lord. Yes, Lord. This is through the help of the Lord. Glory, Jesus. glory, glory. Yes, Hallelujah. I received the Holy Ghost very late. In my adulthood, I'm sorry I didn't receive it right. when I was a preteen or a teenager. You got it right on time. But I received it. That's right. It's I received it. I received it. I received it. Jesus. And I look back on where the Lord has brought me from. And I looked at where my confidence used to be. And I look at where my confidence used to be when I preached my first sermon in that red and black plaid shirt. Yeah. As a wizard. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I look back at it. I look back at it and see where the Lord has brought me from and the habits that I've dropped. The Thank you. That don't have anything over me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now look at my confidence now and how I can speak. Yeah. yeah. I can speak those things that yeah. me, Lord. Yeah. I can speak against those things that have me down. Yes, Lord. Because they have no dominion over me. Yeah. So my message to you today yeah. is speak those things. Yeah. Let his glory reign over you. Hallelujah. Jesus. My God. 